What up, my fellow NBA lovers? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and this will be a continuation of my series, How Loyal Will the Houston Rockets Be to James Harden? And this will be volume three, as now we're starting to see it play out with what exactly Russell Westbrook was talking about with the Houston Rockets culture. As we've seen, James Harden was turning up with little baby, spending money, traveling here and there, even though there's a pandemic and training camp had already started. And James Harden finally returned to the Houston Rockets in which we're seeing already, they inserted him to the starting lineup. There is very little punishment, no fines handed out, nothing. And pretty much the captain of the team is setting a culture. Now, I'm going to use this segment as a backdrop. And every once in a while, I'll check in. You guys check it out. Well, Skill Bayless has, has been covering the professional sports for 40 years. Said all the great coaches and general managers and owners said superstars win games. And you want as many of those guys as you possibly can have. And you realize that when you get one of those guys, mm -hmm. you're going to have to cede or you're going to have to acquiesce to a lot of his demands. And it seems to me, Skip, it takes a special type of... Now, you see what Shannon had just pointed out? You have to acquiesce to a lot of the players' demands. You see, the Rockets owner is stuck in between a rock and a hard place right now. Due to the pandemic and some of the financial situations the Houston Rockets are in, especially due to the China situation with Daryl Morey. James Harden is pretty much his moneymaker right now. And I'm wondering, you know, the only reason he's so loyal to James is because he knows, you know, he's going to generate eyes, generate revenue, especially with that TV deal that they have with China. He keeps things interesting with the Rockets, even though this year they're not going to have or just barely even have any fan revenue. Person To have power and not abuse it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to true, me... True, true statement. It seems yes. to me that James Harden mm -hmm. realized that he had the power, yep. and he abused it. Well, you know what? They're not going to tell me no, so let's stay an extra couple of days so I can kick it with a little baby. Let me stay a couple of extra days so I can hang out and go to this city and do that. And so what happened was, and see, now it's starting to come... This is why probably Chris Paul, this is why Russell Westbrook probably had a problem. No, not problem. This is exactly what he was talking about. No accountability, poor culture. It wasn't. Well, 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 this story says they definitely had these problems. Yeah, yes. So now we're starting mm -hmm. to see because yeah. something's not adding up. Mm -hmm. You want a guy, your best friend, y'all kicked it from you knee high to a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden he like, he wanted out before James Harden even mentioned th anything about getting out. Because he knew that they was never going to win. And why the hell is he sacrificing his stats if they're not going to win? Chris Paul bounced. Uh, uh, Dwight Howard bounced. So now you're starting to see it had a lot to do with it. And Skip, I watched it last night. I know, look here, I ain't saying James Harden no workout warrior, but I can tell he ain't worked not, not one day. Not one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was trending on Twitter, man, that he looks exactly like Kendrick Perkins or a combination of Kimbo Slice. He was carrying <laughs> at least 10 extra, right? Yeah, look, I, Skip, I ain't saying he need to be like LeBron or have a Giannis or Dwight Howard type body. But damn, he was hitting the, that Houston strip club. Them wings must be good over there because he look, he look comfortable. But this is ridiculous, James. Well, I mean, you well, are He hadn't even lifted his hand to trim his beard, no, right? No, man. He this... had the big old bushy <laughs> Kendrick Perkins beard going, right? And I think the thing is, Skip, is that when you look at it... I see, I see Skip Billis must have been on Twitter last night because he already knows. See, James Harden has led the league in scoring three consecutive years. You look at the trip, he can go get you a 50-point triple-double. He He's in the MVP discussion every year. Every so year. you give, you give, you give, yeah. he take, he take, he take. And now, all of a sudden, he's like, well, I ain't got nothing else to take. Y'all ain't got nothing else to give. I yeah. want to go. Hmm. And there, there lies the, the problem that the Rockets have. Everything they've done over the last eight years, yes, Skip, they're trying to win a title for themselves, mm -hmm. but they gave in to James Harden demands, mm -hmm. and now they got nothing else to give. And that's a problem with a number of NBA teams nowadays because they're so stronghold on the superstars, and they're kind of, you know, they're kind of under the superstars, you know, chain of command right now that if they get loyal to the wrong guy, that could end up hurting their franchise for years. As we've seen the Rockets, they have no draft picks. They're kind of in, in a desperate situation right now because they can't just trade James Harden for two or three guys. They're going to ask for a lot. Everyone around the league already knows James ain't going to be the leader no matter where he goes. And he's going to have to be the, at least a second or third string guy on the teams that he wants to get traded to. And so now what do you do? He's like, well, y'all ain't got nothing else to give. Y'all can't bring any more players. Nobody mm -hmm. else wants to play with me. Well, yep. get me up out of here. And if I'm the Rockets... 
I'm going to hold on. James Harden is starting the season. Skip, I know you don't want to take uh, 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 superstar players mm -hmm. off, but I'm holding on because James Harden has basically, by him being the way he is, he's kind of decreased, uh, decreased the value mm -hmm. of what you can actually get. Skip, that's a superstar. Exactly, because other franchises are looking at James Harden like, wow, the Houston Rockets kind of bowed down to everything this man wanted, made him the face, got him the players that he wanted, let him dribble nonstop through his legs. Even though everyone knows that system has a glass ceiling, that's way beyond even before the conference finals. And yet, other franchises must be looking at him like, wow, we're going to trade for this guy. He's going to get nowhere near this type of treatment. Superstars normally command young players and draft picks. Look what AD got. Mm. Look what a, a, a holiday ga they gave up to get holiday. Mm -hmm. And you want to give James Harden away for a, a, a bag of pennies and a loaf of bread? Yo, that Drew Holiday trade kind of set the precedent for what the Houston Rockets could possibly get for James Harden. The fact that just for Drew Holiday, they got three first-round draft picks. Ooh, that left Houston asking for a lot. Because other teams must be looking at, wow, three first-round picks can get you Drew Holiday? I am not trading more than that just to get James Harden. This is, this is way too much. Nah, bro, that's not happening. Mm. But James Harden, you wrong for this one, bro. Mm. Hey, you're a phenomenal talent, but you're wrong for how you've done this. Okay, I hear everything you just said. <sighs> Anytime you see Skip sigh like that, you know he's trying his best not to just OD on James Harden right now. Houston Rockets have fallen deeper and deeper <laughs> into what I call the James Harden trap. Because... A.K.A. the James Harden subprime mortgage. He's hard to hate. He's hard not to love. Right. Daryl Morey just left Houston and, and left behind a full-page ad thanking James Harden for changing my life, said Daryl Morey. Right. He is a revolutionary talent. We have never seen anybody score the basketball from the perimeter the way James can. We have never, ever, ever seen anybody get to the free throw line the way James can. And at the same time, Daryl Moore, you never, ever let any other player do whatever he wants the way you let James can. A.K.A., hey, James, just do you. ISO, dribble nonstop, take as many shots as you want. And make his free throws. He shoots more, makes more than anybody every in the year. history of the he game. He just shatters the record <laughs> every year. We, we have rarely seen a player more durable than James Harden. Mm -hmm. LeBron's up there, but, but James is really up there. He just does not get hurt. Right. He will play through any minor ankle sprain, shoulder bruise, and he takes his fair share of punishment at the rim, as you know. You realize that he's been there for eight years now in Houston, they have made the playoffs all eight years, mm -hmm. and they are the only team in the entire league who has made the playoffs over that span every year. Even, obviously, the Lakers in LeBron's first year missed the playoffs, right? right? And they had missed it They had missed it a bunch before, but I'm saying it's just yeah. happened to everybody. Everybody's had a bad year somewhere. Even Golden State. Even Golden Well, they had the worst record in basketball mm -hmm. last year. So only Houston can say, hey, we've made the playoffs mm -hmm. eight straight times. Now, that's a lot of kudos to Daryl Morey. I, I do give him that. Daryl Morey is a hell of a deal maker on the phone to work out trades, you know, for Dwight Howard, CP3, Russell Westbrook. He's gotten James a lot of help. I mean, you know, Daryl Morey is definitely a, a, a guy that can strike some deals. Now, back to LeBron. Obviously, LeBron has earned the right to dictate within the confines of the Lakers, maybe a practice schedule, an right. off day. I'm sure he does right. that. I'm also pretty sure LeBron is not late. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if they say the bus leaves at X or the plane leaves at Y, LeBron is on time for mm -hmm. that because I just think that's the way he runs his yeah, life. Yeah, that's, that's this professional and, and, courtesy. And, and he knows that ultimately that is the first step toward winning. In, in all the teams I've ever covered, rule number one, and you've said this many times to me, you have to be on time. Got to be. It, and it, 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 it's a... And it goes like that at every everyday job. Your manager has to be there on time. If they're late, it looks a type of way. Everyone else is looking at this person like, you know, they're supposed to be the leader, but they kind of set a bad precedent because they kind of set the tone for everyone else to follow that. So it's not a good look for James Harden.
offensive to you as a team leader if anybody is late because they're taking money out of your pockets because ultimately that's why you're going to lose a playoff game mm -hmm. is because that lack of discipline can carry over. Right. So that's why Russell Westbrook, according to the ESPN story, last year just fell completely apart with James because he was just perpetually late to bus, plane, or film session. Damn. That's crazy. He's late, and how many years has he been playing in the league? God damn. You mean this whole time James Harden has been a leader that's been late? Just That's like the number one basics of just leadership. My God. That says a lot. That's how much the Houston Rockets is babying this guy. After a while, it, it drove Russ crazy because that Oklahoma City Thunder operation, it, it was military-esque, yeah. militaristic, if you will. Yes. It was on time or pay the fine. Right. And in this case, there was a, a bubble incident that's written about in the ESPN uh, piece in which Russ is on time for the film session. It's in the playoffs. Here we go. And... Guess who's late because he scheduled his COVID test right up against the start of the film session. Well, that's just blatant disregard and disrespect. Absolutely. So, so Russ is offended to the point where he's yelling at Dan Tony, start the film, start it now. And Dan Tony's saying, I, I, I can't, can't because I'll just have to run it back. Do you want to watch it twice? Because I'm going to have to show James the same things I'm about to show mm -hmm. you. And Russ AKA his hands were tied. The organization was not going to have that. This is what they allowed. And Russell Westbrook got a mean awakening call. He's just throwing up his hands, and that seemed like that was the beginning of the end. Skip, the thing is that you want your leaders. The thing that worked so well in New England, Skip, is that Tom was on time. He was. Tom did it the right yeah. way. Skip, you can't have your okay. leaders be this undisciplined and then expect everybody else to fall in line. I They're got just going to take your cue, the cue from you. Okay. There's kids in high school right now that are leaders of their teams and they're on time to 6 a.m., 7 a.m. practices. This is unbelievable that this guy's getting paid millions of dollars and he's late. It says a lot about James Harden, especially the Houston Rockets. So all the off day stuff, the rescheduling on the road, uh, you know, all of a sudden James is going to take, if you get an off day on the road, I'm going to take a private flight to Vegas and party for a night. I'm, I'm okay with that occasionally yeah. because the, the point in the piece was he'll come right back the next night and give you what you point out, <laughs> a 50-point triple-double. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm good with off days in L.A. where, where you say, uh, if, if you're not back-to-back, -back, obviously, let's stay overnight in L.A. Let's stay an extra day in L.A. Right. because it's L.A., it's wintertime. Let's right. stay there. Let's right. stay in Phoenix for a day. There's really no winter in okay. L.A. and Phoenix. Okay, <laughs> I, okay. I, I, I got it. But, but I'm good with yes. all that. Now let's get back to LeBron versus James Harden. LeBron's earned the right to dictate some off days and practice schedules, but LeBron has paid that off by getting teams to 10 NBA <laughs> finals. Not, not eight or six or right. four, 10. Right. And he won four out of 10. That's payoff. That's, that's earning your right. your right to have that power you talk about. Right. James Harden has gotten the Rockets even though he's gotten them to eight straight playoffs, he's gotten them to zero NBA Finals, and he's obviously won zero NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. He's gotten them to two Western Conference Finals, and what happened in both of them? He ain't show up, I tell you that. Playmouts happened, featuring James Harden. So as great as he's been during the regular season, as hard as he played on defense last year in the regular season, he was top three in deflections and loose balls recovered mm -hmm. last year. All that added up to what? Well, too many Western Conference Finals flameouts that first year, remember, against Golden State back in 2015. In the closeout game, he went 2 of 11 from the floor, 0 for 3 from 3, and he had an NBA record 12 turnovers. Mm -hmm. 12 turnovers? This is it. The money's on the table. Really? Was that the, was that the Golden State game? Yeah. The one he, he dribbled it off his foot at the saying. end of the game. Yeah, okay. Then we've got, we got too many, there are too many here for me to even go through, but re, you remember the, the classic Spurs closeout game. There's no Tony Parker and no Kawhi Leonard playing for my Spurs yeah. at Houston in a closeout game six. And you got beat by they, they lost by 39 points. <laughs> Well, that's because James Harden couldn't out-ISO San Antonio. They knew exactly what the Rockets was going to do. They only have one game plan on offense, and that's ISO all day. They're pretty predictable. James in that game had six turnovers, shot two of 11 from the floor and two of nine from three. Okay.
yeah, you're not going to fool a team like San Antonio like that with a guy like James Harden. <laughs> it's just not going to work out, even even without those players. You, you, you got to have some d- type of different strategy. Just to play one-on-one nonstop, it's, it's not going to work on that team. That's who he is. And then the 2018 Western Conference Finals, this is the closest that franchise got Mm -hmm. to greatness with James Harden. Remember, they're up three games to two in large part because of Chris Paul the third, right? And then Chris Paul, right on schedule, as often as too often has happened to him, pulled hamstring, gone, starting, that was game five. And so six and seven, James is going solo. Because they end up winning game five to put them up three, two. They did. They're up three to two. In games six and seven, James was a combined minus 32. He shot six of 25 from three combined in those two games. And then, the, well, game seven, they was missed like 24, 25 right. straight threes. They did. Now, when they miss all them damn shots, that's pretty much up to the coaching. That falls on them a lot. But also, James, you know, he pretty much choked back to back. Okay, I, I'm showing you he hasn't lived up to the power that has been granted him, right? Yeah. Now, in that series in 2018, even though they lost game six and seven, that was not their best opportunity to beat the Golden State Warriors. It came in the following year where the same injury bug pretty much plagued the Warriors in which they lost Kevin Durant, had a very thin bench, and they relied on just Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson. And after KD went out with the injury, I don't know how CP3 and James Harden allowed Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson to pretty much molly whop them for two straight games. Right. So he's been through four head coaches. This this article says he got Kevin McHale fired. And you want to talk about coming from a disciplined system? Kevin McHale was a superstar for a Celtics team that you love featuring yeah. Larry Bird. Joe Bird. Yep. And you don't think they were on time? Of course. You, you don't think they were disciplined? You don't think they did it the right way? Right. And, and again, CP3 fell apart because he, he got... He got sick of James because James. Went- I'm wondering right there if the if the money had anything to do with it. When James Harden got that large contract, if that pretty much started to plague the Rockets' front office into doing whatever he wants because they didn't want him to be unhappy. He knows it's Chris's turn. James, according to Chris, would just, just stand at half court and say, okay, and just be nonchalant and and, and spectate the whole offensive mm-hmm. possession. But Skip, that's, right? that, but that's his thing, Skip. Yeah. He doesn't do, he needs the ball because it's not like he's cutting. It's not like he's setting screens for someone else to get open, Skip. He's just going to lally-gag at the three-point line. Yeah. Okay, it's your turn. I'm just- you know what's funny, Shannon? Your boy LeBron does the same exact thing. Just watch any Laker game. When LeBron doesn't have the ball, Look what he does. He just stands around. We'll sit back here. That's why he needs the ball. So if he doesn't have the ball, it's not like he's a great off the ball player. No, nope. he's not like Steph Curry or Clay that's continuously moving. Mm-hmm. He's not sitting back door picks for someone else to get the ball. He's like, well, hey, I'm gonna do my thing. Hey, he gonna call somebody to set a pick for him. Mm-hmm. Skip. I- hey, just like your boy LeBron. But this is a problem throughout the NBA right now, where a lot of players they're just not playing off the ball, particularly stars right now and a few superstars. I just think the thing is, like I said, it's different than football because obviously you have your superstars, but like I said, that abuse of power is a special type of person to know I've got this power, Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to abuse it. And it seems to me James Harden knew he had that power because he had seen them giving to every of his demands. And the more, Skip, it's hard. The more you give, the more they'll take. So you got to put... Skip, if my grandfather say, boy, I got to put, I gotta put a, 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 a limit on what I give because most people won't put a limit on what they'll take. Well, they, very few, almost nobody will. Yeah. And so what, what, did, what did the Rockets do, Skip? Give, give, give. Mm-hmm. James took, took, took. Now we got nothing else. Skip, what can we trade? What can we... We gave up everything to get your boy Russ. Yep. And this is exactly what I keep saying. How loyal will the Rockets be to James Harden? We gave up four and, and CP3. And CP3. Mm-hmm. So we got nothing to give. So James, yep. they're like, you ain't got nothing else to give? Nothing. What guy want to go there? Okay. So you're you're held hostage by by a James Harden who, by the way, he's no free agent. He's got two years left on two his deal. Plus an option at almost 50. It's a lot of money. And obviously, he's now giving a, a, a longer and longer list of destinations for trade demands. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go here, I'll go there. Latest is Miami. There was the Sixers. Uh, obviously, there have been X others. Right. Uh, Tillman Fertitta is about to give James Harden the Kobe Bryant treatment. 
that Jerry Buss gave Kobe, basically. Where he told Kobe Bryant, I am not trading you for a bunch of just little subpar players. You're like a Ferrari. I'm not going to trade you for a bunch of little Hondas. So that's pretty much where the Rockets are with James Harden right now. I just don't know how that's going to happen because I do not think that that you can, like the Sixers, I, I don't think they want to trade either of those two they don't. stars. And by the way, I watched them both last night. Doc's, you know, he's is early going. Mm -hmm. They look really good. Yeah. Me. They're, they're going to be really good. They're going to be a force and a factor. And plus, Tillman Fertitta is not going to make a trade to make Daryl Morey look good. It's just not going to happen. Miami has a culture in place. How are, how are you going to fit James into but, the Pat Riley culture in Miami? I don't get that. Pat ain't, Pat ain't holding. That's not going to work at all. Pat Riley, you have to show up to training camp with a certain percentage of body fat. You can't even play your way into shape going into training camp in the Miami Heat uh, in the Miami Heat world it just doesn't work like that Pat Riley runs his franchise sort of in a militaristic style no flight no come on because it remember uh, well, it uh, Phil Jackson with LeBron over, remember yeah. cause Phil Jackson wrote this book about LeBron how he wanted to stay over for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and Pat like nah we gone mm -hmm. <laughs> we we that means you on the plane also okay <laughs> He would tell James Harden, hey, we're not staying so you could go to the strip club. We gone. I, I don't know how it would go and, over. And, and you can't, how many of your young players do you give up to get James? You, you're going to give up Bam and Hero? Well, then what, oh, what have you got? Well, now you're starting over with just James and what? Yeah. Right? I'm looking at what I've given up. Mm -hmm. And so what happens in a year when he's upset with me when I don't act west toward the man? Mm -hmm. Now, I've given up Bam. I've given up Tyler Hero. I've given up draft picks. Yep. That's what got them in trouble. They've given up everything, and now he wants out. Mm -hmm. So now where do I go? Because yep. what happened? Hold on. What? Number one, that will never happen in Miami. They're not giving up all that just for James to be like, I'm ready to go. Miami is not like Houston. They're not going to be willing to dip into the luxury tax in order to get players. That's not how Miami works. It's pretty much a small market. Well, Miami, you wouldn't think it's a small market, but in the NBA, the way they operate is like a small market team. They don't do luxury tax. You never really see them do major big free agent splash. And when I say splash, I'm talking about the money, giving guys a large sum of cash. You don't ever really see Miami doing that like that. They take advantage of stars that may be frustrated and leaving teams like Jimmy Butler. They take advantage of situations like that. So with Miami... That's not going to work out with James Harden at all. Look at the skinny James. Right before the bubble. Skip, you remember he got in shape. Because, you know, we're going to win a championship. We feeling good. That small ball. Where did he win? Where, where that guy get? I look like that guy ate skinny James. No, looked like he was in the strip club. You know, eating some of them, uh, some hot wings, man, around them fatties. I'll tell you that. Skip, he did not look good last night. James Harden has not been you working. You mean in appearance? Yeah, in appearance. I, I, I thought in, in performance yeah. he looked fine. It, it didn't look like he was pouting or he, he played his usual hard. Well, maybe you he made an injured rib because yeah. that, that jersey was sticking out a little farther it, it than it normally does. Ridiculous. No, I, I'm with you on that. Okay. Ultimately, I blame the owner of the team for this because the buck starts and stops on his desk. Right. So he's going to set a tone that James is going to be able to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Now, Skip, hold up. I don't think Tillman Fertitta is in any type of position to set any tone. See, he's in between a rock and a hard place, like I said before. His casinos, his hotels are closed. He took a hit with Daryl Morey speaking on the China situation. And now his superstar, his money guy, that's making him all that cash, is disgruntled. And he's not trying to lose this guy, especially for nothing. But he's actually not trying to lose him, period. I'm not sure if he's actually in the position to be dictating things, especially in a harsh tone towards James Harden. So it, for years, it was Les Alexander in Houston. Now it's Tillman Fertitta. And I hate to put the onus on them because they probably have, when they bought, that they have little to no knowledge of what's even right. going on here. But it still starts from the top. Well, well uh, Alexander had skipped to his credit. Now, he did have Akeem Olajuwon. So he know him. And, you know, at one point in time, he and Olajuwon was buddy they, here. They were, but yeah. they made amends and everything oh, went out well. So, you, he, he know, Skip, I think the thing is that when you come into this business, you have people around you to, uh, to help you understand that the James Harden, the Kevin mm -hmm. Durant, LeBron James, they get certain privileges mm -hmm. that other players don't get and you have to acquiesce somewhat given mm -hmm. to some of their demands okay but
Now, remember that Spider-Man movie with the grandfather kept saying, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And that exactly applies right here. Get when you give in to every demand, to every whip. Skip, the, the, the article said every personal decision was ran by James Hart. Uh, that tells you everything right there. That's that's a that's some big issue with the Houston Rockets. It's it's within their culture. And it's too late to pretty much reverse it. So it is what it is. We'll see how loyal they stay to James Harden. Once again, I doubt that they'll have any suitable trade partners that's willing to give them a bunch of draft picks for James, especially with the Drew Holiday trade pretty much setting the precedent of how many first round picks that they could get for James. But we'll see how it plays out. Until next time, you guys stay safe. Peace.